Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You are very welcome here indeed. So not many compounds actually extend life in healthy animals, but rapamycin is indeed one of them. Researchers report that its mechanism of action, the mechanistic target of rapamycin, also known as mTOR, is linked to five of the 12 hallmarks of aging. They give a very long list of the conditions that mTOR affects, including osteoporosis, brain degeneration, cardiovascular disorders, and even cancer, a condition for which rapamycin and rapalogs can now be prescribed. And there are links in the description below to the studies and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. Given how central mTOR is to signaling and to function, it's no surprise that researchers have homed in on this pathway in an effort to develop potential treatments. These developments have now moved beyond the in vitro and animal stage, and there have now been enough human studies that this review, the review I'm talking about here, specifically only includes those that have targeted age-related diseases other than cancer. After sorting through all the ineligible material, 19 articles that reported on a total of 22 human rapamycin studies were included in the analysis. 13 of these studies were on healthy participants, while the other nine focused on people with age-related diseases. These studies varied widely in composition and also in analysis, with some of them only having a handful of participants, while others had hundreds. Most, but not all, of these studies were placebo-controlled. Rapamycin itself was the most widely tested compound, but the Rapalog's RTB-101, Everolimus and Temsirolimus were also tested. And the dosages were also considerably different between the studies. In many of these studies, rapamycin and the rapalogs did not have statistically significant results. One milligram of rapamycin did not have any benefits at all on the brains of healthy people. A different study found that between two and six milligrams did not help the cognitive function in people with multiple system atrophy either. In two different studies, low-dose rapamycin had very few positive results in the treatment of wet, age-related macular degeneration, also known as AMD. Here, it did reduce the key physical effects associated with this gradually blinding disease. However, the side effects were such that rapamycin's effects were largely negative, and rapamycin was not recommended for any further study in this field. Everolimus did fare better in a study of pulmonary hypertension. While this was an open-label study and two of the 10 participants suffered adverse events, the other patients fared better in pressure measurements. The participants' hearts had to do less work and they were able to process more oxygen. However, their cholesterol and their triglyceride levels also increased and this is not a good thing. And this was corroborated in another study reporting that Everolimus reduced rheumatoid arthritis. Rapamycin was found to have no clinically significant effects on glucose or grip strength in healthy older people. And it may actually block rather than promote exercise-induced muscle building. On the other hand, topically administered rapamycin was found to decrease the P16 biomarker of senescence in the skin. Rapamycin and the rapalogs had mixed effects on the immune system, with studies disagreeing on its immune effects. One study reported that Everolimus improved response to an influenza vaccine in elderly people, although another study reported that it increased the inflammatory cytokine TNF-alpha. I'd like to see your comments in the comment section about this study. Let me know what you think. I believe they're pretty unremarkable and far more research is needed in humans. Although some people do take rapamycin, and here I'm talking about Brian Johnson, Dave Pascoe, and even David Sinclair has mentioned that he takes it, I don't think it's anything I'll be adding anytime soon. But what about you? 